Greetings, everybody. This is Verona from Ancestral Voices with another Ancestral Voices live interview. We are here today with our third and final installment with Dr. Lua Luca as we speak about the devolution of African spiritual knowledge. And so thank you, Dr. Lua Luca, for joining us again. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. So just to let our audience know, we are operating with a slight delay um, with these interviews. We have faced some technical problems, but we should be able to navigate through this quite smoothly. So Dr. Lua Luca, I'm going to hand the stage over to you. Where do you want to begin with this conversation? Thank you so much. As you said, our title is The Devolution of African Spiritual Knowledge. When in 1885, the Western superpowers shared Africa without the consent of the Black, Charles Darwin had already published his theory of evolution in 1859. So Darwin, spoke about the mutation and adaptation in animal species, among animal species. His theory was extended to the field of social science. It was then opined that the Western religion was scientific and that the African traditional religion was a mere superstitious belief. The theory goes this way. Humanity started from animatism, which is the fear, irrational fear of nature. The second stage of evolution was animism, which is worshipping fearing and worshipping spirits. The next stage was polytheism, which is the belief in many independent gods. And the Western, the West, has reached the top of this evolution, which was called monotheism. Mm -hmm. So, the Black people was supposed to be at the bottom of evolution, stuck at the level of anim animism. Unfortunately, for the supporters of this theory, a team of anthropologists led by William Schmidt, a Catholic priest, this team discovered that the so-called primitive nation nations have a notion or a concept of a most high God who is not anymore worshipped. And this discovery was a blow to the theory which intended to put the black at the bottom of the scale of evolution. But instead of dropping away their theory, they came with a new one and they said, okay, every nation began with monotheism, with the notion of a most high God. But some nations have lost their holy books and they have lost also the contact with their priests. So they have fallen to polytheism and even to animism. And this is how the theory goes now. If you are proud of being animist, remember, know that you are not animist because you believe in spirits, but because it allows the West to proclaim your inferiority. 
unfortunately for the Westerner, their theory of theistic evolution can easily be proven to be false. First of all, the Bible speaks of the spirits 505 times in 456 verses. But nobody speaks of Christianity as being animist. The Bible even attributes spirit to inanimate things like a wheel. And if you read the career of Jesus, you will see that he was using a demonic definition of disease, which implied the belief in spirits. Nobody will call Jesus as being animist. This is used only for you and me in order to affirm our inferiority. Now, in order for Western, Western monotheism to be a logical standard to judge the other religions of the world, it must be valid. So the question is, yeah, this concept of monotheism, which is the concept of the supreme being creator, the supreme being being at the same time the creator. Is this correct, this concept correct? My answer is no. It is illogical and theologically wrong. In order to prove this, you have just to ask yourself one question. Where does creation happen? There are only two, two options. First, maybe creation happens within God. But if creation happens within God, who is the supreme being and creator at the same time, then at the moment of creation, something in God go from non-existence to existence. That means God changes. And if God changes, there might be a principle of the mutability of God. And that principle must be higher than God. Now we know that God is the highest possible being. So that is wrong. Maybe creation happens outside God. But even in this alternative, if creation happens outside God, then God plus added to creation will result in entity greater than God. So in both ways, God is not the greatest possible being. And these, the theologians and the philosophers in the West, they do know this. They know that their concept of, of monotheism is wrong, but they don't have an alternative for this. So because this is the case, they should not use it in order to judge the other theistic concepts of the world. The purpose of this show is to demonstrate that Africa has always had the highest notion of theism compared to the West. Africa has always had a scientific notion of theism, while the, notion, the Western notion of theism is a mere belief. Even the religion in the West is defined by the Western College Dictionary has a belief, while Africa, since the time of Egypt, no. Our purpose 
is to show that the seeming polytheism of Africa, the different aspects of African culture, the result of the devolution of our spiritual knowledge, devolution from an original concept which was scientific. If today Africa is labeled as being his labeled as being polytheistic or animistic, that wasn't the case at the time of ancient Egypt. We know from philosophers like Xenophane, he said that there is many gods according to customs, but one God according to nature. By customs, custom he means Greek custom, and by nature he means science, the science the philosopher were learning in ancient Egypt. So in Egypt, they were taught that religion is a science and there is only one God. The other gods are only his manifestation. Well, at that moment, Greek, the Greek, the Greek, the Christian culture was mired in the belief in, in belief in polytheism. So this monotheism of Egypt was hierarchical and scientific. When the Grecian students like Plato went back to Greece, to Greece, they began to try to demonstrate the existence of God because they were taught in ages that this possibility exists. You can prove the existence of God. So they started to do this, to to demonstrate the existence of God. Unfortunately from them, they were starting from a wrong notion of God. The great, the supreme being as the creator of the universe. By identifying the supreme being and the creator, they went, they were, going in a wrong path. So up to now, the Western cannot demonstrate the existence of God, why it is something easy. When you consider things, things according to African traditional religion, you can, we can demonstrate this through the chemical cosmological argument. Generally, Cosmological argument try to demonstrate the existence of God by starting from the existence of the cosmos. So we can prove the nature of God according to African traditional religion this way. I'm an individual being. You are an individual being. Therefore, we abide in an individual temporal universe. Because this temporal universe is an individual one, it must be the product of an individual creator. Now, here, let's, stay, let's uh, take an hypothesis for just the sake of concision. Let's suppose that every creation exists in its creator. Since the creator is an individual being, there might be other beings like him who are at least potentially creative. They might not yet created their universe, but they exist. And remember, Sheikh Antario speaking about Egypt said that they conceived 
the existence of other universes parallel to this one. So there are also other creators. Now, if we take the sum total of all these potential and manifest creator, we have a being who is the greatest possible being. Why? Because every creation must exist in its creator and the creator exists in these greatest in this, this being. So this being is the greatest possible being. We understand that this being is the supreme God. So there is creators and there is a supreme being. Now, since the supreme being is the greatest possible being, he must be indivisible and he must be immutable. If he were not, there might be a principle of his divisibility and of his mutability. And that principle must be greater than the greatest possible being, which is impossible. So the natural conclusion is that the supreme being is immutable and indivisible. Now, we have seen that every creator manifests an individuality which is included in the supreme being. But since the supreme being is indivisible, we arrive to the conclusion that every creator or every child of God, God being the father, mother, so every child of God manifest the fullness of God, but in an individual way. And we call that fullness the Logos. So we have three different entities. We have the creator, a child of God, who manifests the full glory of the Father, therefore he is a son, a star. And we have the supreme being, God, who is immutable and divisible and transcendent. And we have the logos, the fullness of the divinity manifested in the children of God. Now, due to the indivisibility of God, God and due to the transcendence of God, because God is transcendent, being the soup because he is the supreme being. To say that God is transcendent means that God doesn't know evil. If God knew evil due to his indivisibility, evil and good will coexist in him and will be essential to him because he is indivisible. And God will be infinitely good and infinitely bad, which is a violation of the principle of harmony. So God is transcendent. He is above everything and he is not cognizant of evil. And being transcendent and being indivisible, the father mother, that is God, the, the children of God and the logos are indivisible in their existence, in their substance, and in their activity. The Most High acts through his children by the way of the Lagos. The children acts, act for the Father thanks to the Lagos. This means that due to the transcendence of the Most High, there were two principles that participated directly to the creation, the creator and the logos.